chair just goes boom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Sam Smith here and um, I'm here to celebrate um, a decade of my first album, In the Lonely Hour. Um, and I'm really excited to be here and go through some pictures with you. I hope you like this. So the first picture we have is this picture here, which is me. Is it, oh my God, it's not even me, I'm not even in it. It is Reuben James, the incredible Reuben James, playing piano, Jimmy Napes and Zane Lowe. I'm pretty sure this is Zane Lowe, um, with his back to the camera. And this is a shot of us in Rack Studios. Um, I'm pretty sure this was towards the end of the making of this record. People don't realize that Zane Lowe actually wrote a song called Restart on this album and um, with me. And um, that's all of us together. And it's a beautiful picture. Ruben playing piano, Jimmy by me, standing by the piano. It's a classic sight that I love to see when I make records. I feel like I'm in safe hands when I see these people around me, which is fab. This picture is, this is Stephanie who shot um, my album cover, the first record cover that I ever did in my life. And this is her with her disposable camera. And um, honestly, today was such a, a beautiful day for me because we haven't really worked together since that shoot. And today, just being in the exact same outfit as I was when I was 21 and um, in the exact same pose and with her around me is really, really wild. She's such a beautiful energy and um, I'm just really, really like happy that we that we used Stephanie's work for my first record cover. It's um, that we did a whole shoot. I remember overthinking it for weeks. We were like, oh, I think I originally wanted the album cover to be painted. Um, so we did all these things um, on the day. And in the last five minutes, uh, Stephanie just got out a disposable camera and just took a picture of me in that pose. And that was the album cover. And it was just so simple. And um, I've never regretted it once, actually, that album cover. So yeah, thank you, Stephanie, so much. This is the album cover. Very um, colorful, joyful. <laughs> Um, yeah, so when I was saying we were doing the album shoot, that this is what we tried to do. <laughs> Midnight Mass. That was the original title for this album, Midnight Mass. I'm joking. This is a gorgeous photo, oh my God. So this is Howard from Disclosure. And I remember when this was taken, he was, um, he was in the trailer for um, Coachella, just before the Coachella performance, our first ever one. Um, it was Disclosure's performance and I came on to sing uh, Latch. And I'm pretty sure Mary J. Blige came on stage the first night too. I remember being at Coachella really scared. I was very intimidated because I was like 21 years old and never been to a festival, festival before. And there was just loads of just gorgeous people everywhere. And I was very intimidated and insecure. And um, I remember going on stage and Katy Perry watching me and me shitting my pants. Um, and there was loads of people there watching the performance and um, it was scary. I find Coachella quite scary if I'm honest as a place. But um, that's a beautiful photo, beautiful Howard. Oh my God, this is amazing. I think that sums up the first three years of my career, if I'm honest. Um, I think this is me at a regional radio um, chat. I think I'm, if I remember rightly, we're in just outside of Manchester. And I think I was singing, I sang like a Bruno Mars cover. I just, that, this picture just makes me think of just how tired I was. I was, I don't think I've, I've never worked as hard as I did the first three years of my career. Just, um, you know, I, I broke my voice. That's how hard I worked. I had to have an operation on my throat like three years into it because it was just nonstop interviews and traveling. And on top of that as well, celebrating because we, the first album just did crazy things. So it was a, it was a whirlwind first three years of my, of my career in releasing music. 
This pitch is gorgeous. This is me and Jamil and Brendan, my uh, drummer and my bass player. Um, I, it's just, this reminds me of the, the, the old days of, of being with my band and um, such an amazing and important time as a musician for me because we were all on the same bus. First time I'd ever been on a tour bus and I remember everyone was sharing rooms at the beginning and um, just touring on a budget, playing, playing rooms, 500 people max, um, and just really just green and, and just special, special times actually. I kind of think of these times as my university because I didn't go to university. I left school, worked in bars and news agents and stuff and then moved to London. And I feel like this time with, with the band and my band um, was like my university. We had a lot of fun, we really did. This was on the day of shooting Stay With Me, um, which was actually around the corner from here in East London. Um, I remember this jacket. I remember getting drama about this jacket. But it was, this is Jamie who directed the video. It was a really beautiful day. It was so special. I, with this video, I, I was, I remember, I lived in South London in Oval at the time, and there was a street called Fenton and Road, which we ended up shooting um, my video for Love Me More, which is on my last record. Um, because that's originally where I wanted to shoot this, um, this video for Stay With Me, because it was a street next to where I used to walk to Vauxhall, so I've got very mixed memories walking down that street um, after big nights. And, um, and yeah, so we tried to recreate this in East London and it was, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful day. It all went really well. Um, a few fashion choices I, I wouldn't make now. This picture, this is fab. This is um, everyone making I'm Not The Only One, the video, which I, I've made so many music videos now. And for me, this video, I'm for I'm Not The Only One, was, is my favorite video that I've ever done. And I think it'll be the, my favorite video I'll, I'll ever do because it's, um, the song was, was a song about a, a married couple um, that I knew. And I was just so, I remember being so specific about what, what I wanted this video to be. And it was really like, I kind of, it was me kind of directing it, I guess, a little bit. Luke Monaghan, who's done loads of work with me and still does, is so incredible and directed this, but I was giving him such a headache on the day. Like I was over his shoulder the whole time because it was just so important to me to capture um, the heartbreak from uh, Diana's character, because that song really is about the perspective of this, this person I knew knowing that her husband was cheating on her. And I, it was just so important to me to make sure that um, she came across strong, um, strong but vulnerable. And there was strength within her vulnerability in the video. And I think Diana did such an amazing version of that. And yeah, I just love this video so much. And this is me and Di Diana, which is amazing. I love this picture. I remember being very hungover on that video day though. These were the days when I was just first, it's the first time I ever went to LA. And every time I, I was in LA, I just couldn't believe the gay bars and all the, all the amazing, exciting people everywhere. So there's a lot of hang hungover days in LA. And me and Diana had a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So I think that picture sums up our exhaustion very well. I love this picture, this is taken from the living room of the house that we shot um, shot the, the music video in, and she's staring at um, her husband's clothes on fire. And it's such an amazing shot. I remember I was the one that was like, smoke, you gotta smoke. But she looks so beautiful. This is amazing. This is me and um, Howard and Guy from Disclosure outside Madison Square Garden. I remember this was my, must have been, a year, about a year and a half after releasing my first album, um, I sold out Madison Square Garden and the boys came and, and we did Latch together. Um, 
I remember being petrified. Um, that show. Um, and felt completely unprepared to be playing to an arena full of people um, at 21 after just releasing my album. It was crazy. But it went really well. And um, it was a beautiful night. I remember loving that night so much. I remember Ruben's piano broke, though, which was dramatic. This was just before, I think this was just before people decided I was uncool because they painted a picture of me and I was, it was in front of Rough Trade in New York, which is quite a cool place, edgy place. Um, I don't think they do this now. <laughs> um, but I remember being really excited because I felt really edgy. <laughs> a beautiful shot. This is me and Rocky. He, um, he jumped on I'm Not The Only One. Um, and I'll always have very fond memories of, of him. And this was at um, the Roundhouse in London um, for, an, I think it was an iTunes festival. And he came and performed with me. And I just remember being so um, touched and taken aback by, by how kind and wonderful he is as a person. And just really meant a lot to me to have, uh, to have him jump on my songs because um, not a lot of rappers have been on my songs and it meant the world to me and I loved his verse, it's incredible. And this last shot, this is me winning Grammys, which is crazy. Um, it was a weird night. It was, a, it was, a, it was an absolutely mad night. But it was one of the most incredible night, most incredible, overwhelming nights of my life. Because I was just so young and I couldn't believe that that this has happened and my family was there and um, yeah, it was so special. I've, I've the, my, the searing memory I have of that night in my head was being front row and I'm pretty sure, was it Guns N' Roses, I think, played, they opened the show and there was fire, they had loads of fire at the beginning and we were front row and so the fire was like this close and I, 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 got, ros I got like rosacea, so my cheeks went really red. And then the first award they announced was best new artist, which I won. So I just remember just being so self-conscious that I was so red. Um, so yeah, that's the memory I have. There you go. So it's been a decade of In The Lonely Hour, 10 years of In The Lonely Hour. And um, this is the first time ever in my life as a singer and as a songwriter that I've ever looked back um, and really celebrated properly by, you know, look, going into the music, going into the memories, shooting things that we shot before. It's the first time I've really done this in my career. And, and gone back like this. And it's really such a beautiful thing. I think that um, it's my job and, and, and many artists will know this, you know, it's all about moving forward and, and, and living in the now. And, and so it is nice to look back and to, um, to remember how much I've changed and how much my music has changed and also how much I'm still the same. Um, so it's been, a really beautiful time looking back at all this stuff and I hope you all enjoy it and um, I really would love this this time this this celebration this year for in the lonely hour to be a time for all of us to come together and and share memories and um, yeah just look out for each other because we're all growing up together it's quite wild <laughs>